Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our course vlogs. And this time we're out here at the beautiful Tierra Rajada Golf Club and you're tuning in to the back nine today. Hey, the front nine is in the link of the description below. Make sure to check it out if you haven't already. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe as we'd love to see you here week after week for some more golf. And hey, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up at the end. Here we go, number 10, straight up the hill. Only 350 on the card, playing a lot more than that. Here we go. Now the back nine starts off right behind the clubhouse, just next to the first tee. And as we head off the 10th tee here, we're gonna be staring straight up the mountain, off the tee, and especially into the green. This one's also playing directly into the wind, so 370 up the hill will easily be about 400 yards. Add that breeze and it's even more. Now the fairway kind of splits there between the bunkers. I'm trying to get it to the second partition of the fairway as there's a big collection area. Then I can hit it up onto the green, hopefully to the proper tier. Now as this hole climbs the hill, there's different levels and tiers on the fairway causing big collection areas like this underneath us and absolutely disastrous lies as it doesn't look like the grass is growing in very well. It's just a little chip of a sand wedge up the hill to the correct distance, pin high 15 feet for birdie here on number 10. That's just another comfy tap in par to start the back nine. And we're here to the beautiful par 3 11th, sitting on the far east side of the property and right on top of the ridge. You're going to have to carry the canyon from the back tees all the way to that short fairway and 210 yards all the way back to this flag. There's plenty of bunkers down the right hand side to capture any shots that bail out to the right. Now here, this was exposed to every ounce of the wind in our face. A good two club wind just trying to punch one underneath it. And it ended up here in the right hand bunker. There's plenty of new sand though, so it is nice and soft. Splash it out to 10 feet and give yourself a look. Let's see if we can get another par here. Not gonna make the putts if you don't hit them square. If they're going right off the face, they're never gonna go in the hole. Now the easiest hole on the back nine is this downhill, downwind par five. Number 12 is 550 from the tips, but playing significantly downhill off the tee, it's gonna shave about 25 yards off that total. And there's just a little bit of bunkers protecting the left and right of this fairway as it snakes around the edge of this ridge. Make sure you air way off to the right hand side on your layup to give yourself a nice angle into this green. But the fairway is wide and forgiving until you come to the green. Plenty of sand all the way around it and a very undulating green. But today we're facing pretty much a bullseye hole location right in the middle. Now with the wind at my back, I like to lean back on it a little bit, get a little bit extra height out of the drive, ensuring I get all of that air underneath it. This one went a long way down there. Just the seven iron into the green, that's my 190 club. As we are sitting down a little bit more in the valley here, not exposed to as much of the wind as we were on the previous hole and this tee shot. Another eagle putt that just sinks underneath the hole. A comfy birdie, but man, oh man, two eagles in one day would have been a treat. And now on to the 13th as we go from the easiest hole to the most difficult on the back nine. Luckily, the wind is still at my back. But as you see, this is one of the tightest driving areas on the entire course. But luckily, you can miss a little bit more than especially on that canyon front nine. I'm trying to fly that first bunker, but then water is going to come into play both left and right. That little baby creek and of course that lake. Today, we're also facing a front hole location, which is definitely going to bring all of that water into play. But luckily, not that back bunker. 
Now, just a smooth two iron for me here, straight down Main Street. This one caught the hard fairway and ran forward. You can see these Bermuda fairways are just a little bit dormant out here in the wintertime. A, still a great playing surface though, but the ball is going to run. Now here downwind, I anticipated a little bit more fly out of that wedge, but it just didn't go. A little bit short of the green and now a little long of the hole. 20 feet back for par is not ideal. Putting back into the wind as well there. A bogey after a birdie. Well, it all evens out, I guess. And we're here to the 14th hole. This beautiful par three is over water today as the hole is gonna be playing back left. It's gonna bring all of that water into play. No reason to bail out to the right. I was flushing it all day long and the wind was behind my back. But of course, I didn't play for enough carry again. Soared this seven iron a good 200 yards and long of the green onto the hillside here. Had a terrible lie in the rough and all downhill to this flag. You can see how much this ball just keeps on going and going and going out to about 15 feet once again for par. Sooner or later, I'll get one of these to go in. And back to back bogey sends us down to one under par on the day, but two over on this back nine. And now we're turning right back around as this entire back nine plays parallel to one another. So this is right back into the wind and right back up the hill. A long par four here playing around the corner. It's going to be blind off the tee. You're going to be barely able to see those bunkers there on the corner. Play it out to the fat of the fairway here and give it all you got as it's going to be slightly uphill into this green. So the green is going to play blind from the fairway. You're not going to see any of those undulations or humps and bumps. And you're also not going to notice how shallow this green is. It's a lot wider than it is deep. Now these trees do shield you a bit from the wind, but you know it's up there looking at the tops of the trees. Flushed another driver right down Main Street here, and from 150 yards, I took my 197 iron, just trying to chip this to the middle of the green and get out of here with my par. The first mission was accomplished. Let's lag this up there and maybe even make it. Well, that does qualify for a lag on to the last par five of the day here the 16th hole don't be deceived by that yardage 516 playing directly back up the hill and of course it's right back into the breeze still off the tee though it's a gigantic landing area a big old wide runway out there for you just make sure you don't go in that little bunker on the right but as we come into the green i'm not even gonna count them too many bunkers stack this hillside. Judge your approach properly and avoid the sand at all cost. If you're in it from inside 100 yards, good luck hitting it up the hill. Once we get up to the green, finally we're on top of all of the sand and it's a severe two-tier green and today a front hole location. Now here I'm still playing the cut off the tee to keep it down the middle and into the wind. This one went a little bit further right than I wanted, but it did stay in bounds and I had a look at it. 181 played 200 yards up the hill and into the wind I expected it to play about 215. That's my five iron and lo and behold it went all the way to the back of the green as coming into this green there was no way any shot was going to hold it coming from that horizontal angle trying to feed this very long eagle putt down to the hole. My camera decided to tip over because there's so much wind, set it back up for the birdie putt and didn't really focus on it. Another couple seconds looking at that one, I'm sure I could have gotten it to go in. It is what it is, last par three of the day and it's just a little chip shot off the hill. We've spun back around another 180 degrees and the wind is at our back. Only 108 yards down the hill with the wind at your back. This felt like the seventh hole at Pebble Beach that I have still yet to play. Sooner or later, 
sooner or later we'll get out there. And we're gonna take the cameras with us, I just don't know when it's going to happen. Trying to tap this one in for another par as we go into the 18th hole, one under par, and we're facing one of the most uncomfortable finishing holes that I've seen in a very long time. I'm pretty happy that I saw it from the air before I got to play it, as this hole is treacherous and you really don't know where to go. Off the tee, the bunker is your target. Get the distance to it and make sure you fly it over it. If you don't have enough, obviously down the side is awesome. But if you can get it over the corner there, you do open up the hole a little bit, allowing yourself to play this as an easy two-shot par four. Water, though, protects the entire second shot, and that green wraps all the way around the backside. And of course, we're facing a back left hole location today, which is just as treacherous as it possibly gets on this hole. And it's just another two iron for me off the tee, down the middle. It was just rolled out on the left-hand side here. It was sitting on the car path. So I did get a little extra distance off the tee. It was nice. And my 140 pitching wedge should send this to the middle of the green, but the lie just pushed it a little bit right. And I got another very long lag putt here from the front of the green all the way to the back. And I'm just trying to get this down in two and shoot under par on the day. Hey, just another comfy tap in par to finish it out. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you all next time. Later.